I often don't even talk about this aspect of my testimony because I don't believe in magnifying demonic power. In fact, I believe in the church today that one of the bigger issues is not so much demonic oppression, rather it's demonic obsession. And sometimes we take on doctrines and theologies that so magnify the power of the enemy that we minimize the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to remind you, no matter what spirit is coming against you, there is no spirit more powerful than the Holy Spirit. And we have to stop talking as if we serve a little God and we're facing a big devil. Church, the scripture declares that when you resist the devil, he will flee from you. The Bible doesn't say that if you resist the devil, he fights. It says you resist the devil and he will flee. That means he runs. Why? Because he recognizes that you finally know who you are. We have Christians bragging bragging about their bondage. Well, the Lord knows that the reason the enemy attacks me so much is because he knows how anointed and appointed and great I am. He can see my destiny. No, my friend, the reason that he can keep you in bondage is because he knows that you've already surrendered that area. Oh, I can hear a groan. I know we're just on the right vein here. And we magnify the power of the enemy. But I'm not sharing this to magnify the power of the enemy. I want to share with you just how dark things were so that you can understand just how marvelous that light of the Holy Spirit truly is. So my great-great-grandfather was a warlock from Zacatecas, Mexico. He was also a politician, very wealthy. People would come from all over the world and he would place curses on people and they would also bring him the sick that he might heal them, but of course he used demonic power. There was a report, and we weren't able to verify this, but there was a report from people in the area who said that he was able to call down fire from the sky. Now, this was great demonic power, but again, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm not saying that to magnify the power of the enemy. We recognize that we are in a spiritual battle and that demonic power is real. So that's a part of the story. Now, people ask me often, David, do you believe in generational curses? I believe that the enemy will strategize against families generationally. And as he strategizes against families generationally, he recognizes what temptations work for that family. And because of genetics, because of tendencies, because of social constructs and the way that these individuals are raised from generation to generation, what worked on the father will work on the son. What worked on the mother will work on the daughter. This is why you'll see generations of alcoholism, generations of drug addiction, generations of adultery. Why? Because the enemy knows that if it worked on the previous generation, it will likely work on this generation. But we have to get this picture out of our mind of a demon waiting in the corner of a delivery room to jump onto the child. And that as soon as the baby's born, it jumps on that child and now it has it and there's nothing that can be done unless they solve some riddle. So I believe in what's called generational attack, and if we respond to the attack of the enemy with disobedience toward God, then we have what's called generational consequence. You see, I don't like to use the term generational curse because the term generational curse implies that there's nothing I can do in my power to break it, but when you recognize that it's generational consequence, then you begin to see that the choices you make determine how much the enemy can get away with in your life. When you say generational curse, you blame your parents for your bondage, and that's not biblical. Guys, it's not biblical. You point to the Old Testament scripture where the Bible talks about that generation being visited upon generation with that wrath and with that curse. What's actually being talked about there is a nation that's experiencing captivity from the surrounding nations such as Babylon. And when that nation was disobedient toward God, they would go into slavery and therefore their children would be born into slavery. It's not saying that if your parents sin that God's going to hold you accountable for that. Nothing in the scripture like that. In fact, it says just the opposite. And so once you begin to recognize that it's generational consequence and not generational curse, you realize that the choices you make determine whether or not you're going to walk in the spirit or walk in the flesh. 
The enemy will tempt you from generation to generation, yes. The enemy will attack you from generation to generation, yes. But you do not have to walk in the same bondage that your parents walked in if you begin to follow Jesus. I actually have several generations of Christians in my family. So I'm a fourth generation Christian, third generation preacher. Did you know my grandparents were missionaries to Russia? Did you know that? You didn't know? Did you know they're sitting right here right now? I wasn't planning on doing this, and I'm so sorry. Can you come up and say hello to everyone, please? So, so these are my grandparents, and um, they're, they're Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled Christians. Um, just, you're going to love them. Watch. So, so Pop, you want to just greet the people, say hello? Hello. <laughs> it's amazing what God does when you say yes to Him. He gives you a choice. You could go your own way or you could go His way. My wife and I, we said yes on the same day. I didn't, I went up to the altar and she went up to the altar. We didn't go up together, but we ended up together. And when we, when we said yes, the gospel changed us and the generations after us. The, the golden thread, the blood-stained thread went through our hearts and touched our children, our children's children, children. Do you want to say a few words of encouragement to them? I just want to say that the Holy Ghost is here. And you need to reach out and trust the Lord tonight and grab what God has told you and preach yourself out to the world about Jesus. Love the Lord with all your heart and mind and soul and all things will be added to you. God bless you. We love you. We love our grandson. Aren't they awesome? <laughs> and and they're, they're, the same, they're the same people in the pulpit as they are in real life. And so I want to say I honor my nani and poppy, and I'm so blessed that they're my grandparents, and I hope you move to Texas with me soon. Okay. So come right this way. I'm going I'm to help you here, nani. Can we hear it for them one more time, please? 